Hi there, so today we are gonna do a video on building this workbench. And I'm sitting really low, that's just because where I have the camera. So we've got a maple top with a walnut centered workbench with a small tool well in the middle. The core of this is actually built out of two by fours, just some cheap pine. And the top layer is uh, maple, outside edges are maple. We've got our dog holes in here as well. And I've got the vices on. Uh, it's one of the last things I just added on. I still have another coat of the top coat to do on it. I'm going to finish it with a 400 grit sandpaper light sanding and then another light finish on top. Uh, we've got two of these uh, workbench vices. They're gras. They're not expensive, fairly good. And I found some poplar to use for the clamps. Put one on each end. And that's pretty much it for the description. And um, we'll go through the build video with some really cool casters I found for it. And then eventually we will have some cabinets built inside underneath for storage instead of a uh, collect junk shelf. All right, let's get started. So here's the uh, first start of our build of the uh, new workbench. Started off with a quick sketch. See if that's kind of visible here. So basically a Rubo style bench, a Rubo style bench. There will be dog holes in the top. I'm gonna to do two wells, tool wells. And the center is actually gonna be walnut cause I've got a bunch of it. So I'm gonna use it. The rest of the table is gonna be all pine just cause that's what I have. Cheap and it'll work. Uh, the base, rather simple construction base, we'll use all the cutoffs from the 2x6s and 2x10s I got to cut pieces out of the top for the top. And this will be based on a piece of plywood, sort of four post. We'll use the, the uh, cross pieces here to put lag bolts from underneath up into the tabletop if I ever wanted to change it out at some point. And then we'll put... Uh, two cabinets in here as well later, uh, like drawer cabinets that will slide in. And for the casters, doing something different on the table that this table saw is sitting on. In one of my previous videos, the base is a open torsion box and I've got six casters underneath with uh, some toggle clamps on the outside in four corners to, uh, to brace it and use it as a leveling platform too because you can adjust the uh, the feet on the toggle clamps. For this one, I went a little bit different and saw casters like this online. Each one of these, I got some bigger ones, I think is about 700 pounds per caster. It has a built-in leveling foot. So basically you turn this, just finger tighten, and then the foot will come out I think this one extends about about an inch and a half out and you can use that for leveling and uh, for uh, I guess sturdiness so it doesn't roll around and then you can just with your finger put it back in so these are actually quite nice so we're going to use these on the workbench uh, picked them up on Amazon they were I think 80 some bucks Canadian for the set cheaper than going with uh, toggle clamps and regular casters like I did on the other workbench. The only difference with these is that they have to be in the open so you can get to them. Not a big deal, so that'll go on the bottom. Total height, I want it to be slightly lower if not close to what I have the um, table saw set to, which is 36 inches, so I can use it as a makeshift extension table if I needed to. So with this extension wing, plus the workbench should sit about the same height. I can either adjust the height of the workbench or the height of the table saw base if I need to uh, raise or lower it by about half an inch. So that's my target. And to get to that target, I'm gonna actually build the top first so I know what thickness I end up with. Then I will build the base based on that to get to my top height. 
And for the tabletop itself, I'm gonna do it in three sections, then I can plane them down on the planer. I'm gonna keep them at about 11 to 12 inches wide so they'll fit through. Do it in three sections. The middle one is gonna have uh, some walnut down the center top. Underneath is gonna be a couple uh, strips of two by four, which will actually be cut off from a two by 10. So I'm gonna work on that center part first. I'll get some outside um, two by sixes. I'm gonna shooting for about four inches height and also for the sides. So that's what I'm gonna do first. I'll get all the PC pieces assembled. Don't need to see any of the planing and sanding and cutting is kind of boring. I'll just show some of the assembly after I get the pieces prepped. So for our workbench, we ran into some problem with the type of wood that I've been getting. I wanted to go with just a pine workbench using some two by sixes or two by eights and trying to get a nice clean top. And if I'm gonna laminate a bunch together, I'm looking for about four inches thick. A lot of it had knots. This is just a cutoff, but I had a hard time finding anything clean enough that wouldn't have any knots. So if it looked like this, along at least one whole side of the board, I could use it. I was lucky to find one, maybe. So being that I didn't want the top to have knots in it, what I did have was a fairly good collection of some cutoffs, which I used for different things and cutting boards and whatever, but this is a, one of the pieces that I cut off a 12 foot length of maple. We are about inch and a half to two inches wide, Thickness here is anywhere. I've got some pretty thin stuff at about half an inch up to inch and a half, inch and three quarters thick. The uh, one side is rough. So all I did was run these through the planer to clean up the rough side, flip it over, clean up some of the saw marks on the bottom side, as well as both edges that I used to uh, glue together to make some panels. Doing that, Cleaned up a bunch of the longer pieces to make maple panels, like so. This will be the eventual top of the workbench. So we've got a maple top. We're gonna use the pine or two by sixes, like this that will be laminated underneath to give us our height. We're gonna shoot for about four inches thick. So we'll have a maple and walnut top workbench instead of the original plan of pine and adding in some walnut accent. So the walnut down the center, which I'm going to have two tool wells in, I've done the same thing. I laminated two, three strips of walnut together, plane those down. It's about a half inch thick. Laminate it onto some two by fours that I've cut down. They're inch and a half thick or whatever. And then I'm going to use some cutoffs from my kitchen table, which I don't, I'm not sure about that height, but it doesn't matter. We'll uh, 45 these off here on the table saw, then I will eliminate these to the top here so it looks like a continuous piece as much as I can. So one for the end, we'll do a small one in the middle with two 45s and another one on the far end, and that'll be our walnut accent down the middle with the tool wells. And then we'll have maple on both sides of that for the rest of the table. And basically this is what it's gonna look like. We've got maple laminated onto our two by fours. We'll plane this side flat along with this side and then we will laminate two of these to the side of our walnut piece, like so. Then we'll run this through the planer. I'm shooting for about 12 inches wide so I can use the DeWalt planer here to uh, make that all the same thickness. We'll do three sections like that and glue those together to make our final tabletop. And flattening that, I'm not sure how we're gonna do yet. I might see if I can take it to a shop and have them run through a nice 48 inch wide planer. We'll see. So we've got all our sections uh, ready to go. We're gonna do one big glue up. 
Then I'm going to uh, trim off the ends and take this to a shop and have them run them through a 48 inch wide planer because mine isn't big enough. I planed down the center one, which I have glued up here just to get it closer to these ones. And it was heavy enough just doing the center piece. So with all of our sections like this, do some bar clamps, top and bottom. We'll get this glued up and then I will need help to move it because it's gonna be really heavy. And then we'll uh, start building the base. So that's next. Here's the bottom of our workbench. I've got it upside down right now, partially assembled to uh, put our casters on, which are these awesome things. So I just did a couple of the posts here, cut them to length, did uh, glued and screwed a cross piece here to both posts, turned upside down, cut my base plywood to size, and I'm glued and screwed that to the the posts as well. And then I'm in each corner, pre-drilled some holes. This will go here and we will uh, lag bolt these in. That's all four corners and then we'll flip it over so that we'll uh, get it ready to put the top on. All right, so here's our base is done. Got it on wheels. The uh, bottom section here, we're going to put cabinets in after we put the top on. What we'll do is the top will go on and then we'll lag bolt it from underneath these cross pieces. The tabletop itself is still waiting to be flattened. So next weekend, I'm taking this whole thing to a cabinet shop. We're going to run it through a large, I think it's a 48 inch wide planer. Uh, they will do both sides for me. We'll flatten it down and then I'm going to trim the ends off so that we're square. It'll make it about 72 inches long and 34 inches wide and that'll fit nicely on our base. So we will get that done next weekend and then we'll uh, mount it on there and we'll be ready to put it in place. All right, so I've just got my tabletop back from the uh, machine shop or planers. I didn't actually take a video of that. So this morning, loaded it on the truck and uh, took it there, ran it through 48 inch wide planer and belt sander. So it's uh, perfectly flat, perfectly smooth, very happy with it. So what I'm doing now is, um, <coughs> cutting off the ends. This is the bottom side right now with the pine. I ran it on the top, I cut the, uh, cut the top side, flipped it over, I cut the bottom side. And with my makeshift track saw and the uh, skill saw, it doesn't go through all the way. So I've got about three eighths of an inch still that's there. So what I do is I sort of flip it around and then I can make the saw lower so I can get about two and a half inches out of this saw, which will cut the rest of it off. So I'm doing that from the bottom side to finish trimming up the ends. Then we will flip it over and I will mount it on the rolling cart that I have built. And then we'll get the uh, vices lined up to mount. And we'll figure out some dog holes after that. Okay, so I've got the tabletop flipped back over and I slid it onto my movable workbench, which is actually stationary now. So I've got those uh, new casters. So I put down all the feet to keep it from moving, slid it onto here, got rid of my temporary table. I'm offsetting the top in order to mount the vise on the one side. So I picked up one of these. I actually picked up two. They're actually quite cheap. They work really well, I think. I actually haven't used it yet. So one's gonna mount from underneath here. Then we'll build out uh, some wood clamps on this side. And the second one is gonna be on the front side of the bench, which is this side, and it's gonna mount here. So it'll be approximately here on the underside of the bench. And I'll have another clamp on this side and all the drawers will be from underneath. 
So what I'm gonna need to do now is now that I've got the alignment where I like it on the workbench, I might slide it a bit more that way because I don't need as much clearance for this, maybe only about half an inch. Doesn't really matter. I'll uh, make sure it's centered um, widthwise and then from underneath, where I've got those cross pieces, I'm gonna lag bolt from underneath. And I don't think I have the lag bolts here, so I'm gonna have to go get some. So this is our workbench here. We've got it uh, pretty much ready to put the dog holes in. It took me a while to figure out what, uh, I guess drill bit to get. I'll show you why here. Move the camera up a little. So I wanted to go with the three quarter inch dog holes. So I picked up this, which is a three quarter inch dog hole bushing from Lee Valley. So this is the exact size that we need. And I also picked up this Milwaukee bit, which is a three quarter inch uh, auger bit. You would think it would work, but this won't. It is a nice looking bit, but only the end is three quarters of an inch. It actually tapers down to about less than five eighths at this end of the auger part. So if you wanna use it in the bushing, it wobbles, that's kind of useless. So I went and looked at the longer bit, they make an 18 inch version of this as well. Same problem, uh, the one inch uh, auger bit is one inch at the end and then tapers down two seven eighths for the rest of the shaft. So these are kind of useless. Don't get these for doing dog holes unless you have them in a drill press. So also went to Lee Valley and they have two different options. They have their HSS um, one, which is about $40, or I picked up this one, which is their utility grade uh, three quarter inch um, Brad Point drill bit. It's actually quite a nice drill bit. And this one fits this quite nicely. There's a tiny bit of play and that's what you want. So you've got some movement and that's what we're gonna use. Plus this one's much longer. So what I did here is I kind of decided where I want the first line of holes to be. Built a quick template. So we'll drill our first hole. The, bring this closer. This one is using the three quarter inch bit itself. We've got a four inch spacing between the two that I marked off and drilled this with the drill press. And we'll use that as our guide. So basically you just drill the first hole, move it over, put a pin in to keep the alignment and then you're equal spacing all the way across. This hole here, according to the paper that comes with this, says to drill a one inch hole, which is wrong. I used a seven eighths uh, Forstner bit and it's got a nice fit. And then right at the top, there's some knurling. And what we're gonna do is this is one and three eighths deep. It's actually not all the way through because I want the other bit, the three quarter inch bit to go all the way through on the first hole. So we're gonna put this here. We'll tap this into the hole so it's nice and snug. And then we'll use the drill bit to go all the way through and into our worktop. Before we do it on the actual worktop, we'll do it on a scrap, which is the cutoffs from the table, which is way down here. So this is one of the ends that I cut off after it was plain, so it's the exact same thickness. And we'll use this as our test end. We'll just clamp it down here, do our first hole, move it along, see how our alignment works and we'll go from there. So that'll be next. Okay, we are ready to do some dog holes now. So what I did was I decided where I wanted the first dog hole to start and I draw a reference line across the one end because we'll use that same line as a reference to 
move through the, the piece and get everything done. So the first one is about eight inches from the end where our tail vise is gonna be. I'm only gonna put sort of one row down the middle. And then every second one, we'll put one at the back. And what I did was, got our jig ready. I originally was gonna go with a four inch uh, spacing and decided to go with six. So I did a second hole at six inches. So we'll do our first one with the bushing and just drew a reference line here. We'll just line this up clamp it down and drill our first hole. We'll move it along, use a three quarter inch dowel as a reference point. We we'll use that into the hole and then we'll just move down. And then once this one side is done, we'll keep the same jig, go to the other side of the table, do the other row. We won't do as many on the back side, maybe every second one. So maybe we'll go 12 inches apart. So in order to do that, and if I want them to be parallel, before I take the jig off, let's say I have this one here and I want another hole matching on the other side of the table, I'll just draw a line using my reference line here, make a mark, and then with a square, I'll make the mark on the other side of the table and that's how we'll get the alignment. That's about it. not clamping any backer boards underneath. If I get some blowout at the bottom, I don't really care. The core of this table is pine. The top is maple and walnut. Drilling through the maple is actually makes a nice clean hole. The pine is a little bit rougher. I did that on a test piece there. And using our good drill bit, we're aligned, we're flush, here we go. The pine shavings tend to build up in the drill bit, so just empty it out every once in a while. And that's it, we're through. A Little bit of blowout at the bottom. It's not bad, but since we had these clamps, maybe we might clamp a piece underneath. Doesn't really matter. There we go. Actually pretty clean. No, that's the four inch. We want six. No movement. And that's it. Let's move along. I put a piece of tape here because this is where I want one of the second holes on the end here. So I'm just gonna actually mark a line right where it's gonna drill. I'm gonna use that line as a reference point to draw across the table. So I can, when I flip the jig around from the other side, I can line it up and I know we're good. All right, our workbench is now done. Got all our dog holes in to the spacing we, I think I'm gonna use. Going to do uh, probably five or six coats of this armor seal finish. I really like use it on my kitchen table and several other projects. Very durable, easy to refinish, easy to fix. So we'll do that. And uh, next will be the cabinets, which will go underneath. And I don't know when I will get a chance to start those.